Okay, this is probably the most chaotic mass you guys will ever be at. So hopefully this is the first and last of those masses. So as we gather here this evening, normally during the Advent season, we wait with singing that Gloria, celebrating the, the glory that the angels sing in, in front of the shepherds. However, on this feast of St. Andrew, as well as the Immaculate Conception that we'll celebrate and Our Lady Guadalupe, nonetheless, we, we pause in this Advent season to praise God. And today we praise him for the work and the ministry of St. Andrew. So let us glorify God by reciting our Gloria. And if you need the inside cover of the Missalette to help you with that, uh, please feel free to join in in praying that prayer. Again, it's found on the inside of your Missalettes. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Most High. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church, a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May you please be seated now as we listen to our Lord in the Scriptures. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For no one, for one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him? of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear with, without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, 
refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting in Matthew's gospel that we just heard, Jesus called Peter and Andrew to come and I'll make you fishers of men. And what did we hear happen next as Matthew describes it? They dropped their nets immediately. As I was thinking about that, I thought, what did it take for Andrew and Peter just to drop their nets? I mean, was it something that Jesus said? Was his words that convincing? Did they see something that happened before that? Um, Again, different scriptures, different gospels share different stories. However, it was this idea of immediacy that Matthew wants to focus on, that they were willing to abandon everything and follow Christ. Now, as I was thinking about that, I couldn't help but think of also Matthew or Andrew also was called um, as he was following John the Baptist. He was his disciple until John saw Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God. And so Andrew then left John the Baptist and followed from following him and he started following Jesus. Now, did he actually follow him? Did it take actually the gospel that we heard today for him to finally um, do what he did and abandon everything to follow him? We don't know. But one of the things we do know is that Andrew was willing to abandon everything 
who follow our Lord. And it was because that he said yes in following our Lord, God's gospel was proclaimed to so many more people through the work and the ministry of Andrew. Now, St. Andrew also was the one who had a boy there with uh, five loaves and two fish when they looked at this huge crowd of thousands of people there gathered, and how are they going to possibly feed them? And Andrew pointed out, well, there's this boy here who has five loaves and two fish, but what good is that for so many of people? But he was the one who brought the boy forward and at least offered what little bit that they had to our Lord. Likewise, Andrew also was the one when a Greek came to hear about Jesus, that Greek went to Philip. Philip then took him to Andrew, and Andrew brought him to our Lord. So Andrew also was very you know, prominent there as well. Then Andrew, once Jesus ascended into heaven, Andrew then um, went and shared that good news to the people of Greece and Syria, and it was there that he ended up dying a martyr's death. Now, after being persecuted and being cruelly treated, he finally was crucified. But instead of dying on a cross like the one that we have above the tabernacle, he died in the cross in the form of an X. And it was said that he hung on that cross for two whole days, but he saw that cross as his throne, as his pulpit, because as he was hanging on the cross, he was still sharing the good news of Jesus Christ as he was still suffering. And many lives were touched because of his faithfulness, because of that message, because he was still willing to share God's gospel, that good news, even as he's dying, he was still willing to share it. And like I said, because of Andrew saying yes to what God asked of him, what Jesus was asking of him as he invited him to come be a fishers of men, that Andrew said yes to, more and more people were impacted by that. And I bring that now to all of you. I think it's fitting that today we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew because today we celebrate that confirmation retreat that in a few months you will be confirmed with the fullness of the God's gift of the Holy Spirit, that you too can get out and share the good news of Jesus Christ. So it's fitting that tonight as we celebrate um, the sacrifice of the Mass, in a few moments you'll be participating in this retreat, is God is giving you the gifts, God's giving you the tools to go forth and touch people's hearts. Now, will we ever touch people's hearts like that of St. Andrew? I have no idea. But I guarantee every person in this church right now is being called by God to be a fishers of God's men, a fishers of God's people. God's calling all of us to go forth and to share that good news. And imagine the people's lives that we can touch if we say yes to that call, that we definitely are building God's church by saying yes to our Lord. And I thought of that just because in a few moments ago, we witnessed several people who said yes to that wonderful message of sharing of the faith just by the ministers of those who are up here in the sanctuary. Now, I asked uh, several people, we, I forgot to get somebody to, to play music for tonight. And so um, I just, at the last minute, after we had confessions for the elementary here at St. Anne's, I asked, asked Father Cornelius um, if he'd be willing to play. And he said yes. And because of that, we have an instrument that is helping us and joining us in our voices together, praising God. Now, granted, we could still have sung without the, 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 the piano, but the piano adds more life to our celebration, more life to our, our singing. And so by Father um, Cornelius saying, yes, we are building God's church with our voices, with our song. We are praising God because of that yes. And likewise, Andrew, whose feast we celebrate today, said yes by being a cantor. Now, granted, we could easily have sung without having a cantor, but it's nice having somebody lead us in song. And so because of that, we are blessed because of that yes. Sam said yes in helping out with reading. Now granted, I could have done all the readings from the Ambo and not a big deal, but by having somebody else share in that ministry, it reminds all of us that we all have a responsibility of sharing that good news. And likewise, we have um, Elena. Is that right, Elena? Is it Elena? Am I saying it right? Lena. Lena. Lena? Lena. Okay, now I totally embarrassed her and mentioned her name several times. So Lena will be helping with sharing our Lord and Holy Communion. Now, granted, I could easily share our Lord and Holy Communion by myself, but by her saying yes, she too is offering our Lord to us and to others so that we can be fed by Christ. Now, these are just some examples, and hopefully I think the gifts are back there. Yes, so hopefully I'll get two more volunteers to help bring up the gifts. So whoever those two people are, yes, I could easily go back there and grab the bread and wine when I need it. But again, by them saying yes, they're participating as being a fishers of God's people. Now, these are just a few examples of what we can do by saying yes. Now, granted, I guarantee it's a lot easier just to sit here like this. 
rather than having to respond and do anything that we have to do. But I guarantee when we say yes, we are not only participating in that invitation of our Lord, but we are also participating in the wonderful work that God has for us. And like I said, tonight is a great retreat that we are given those tools to, to discern how best can we take the gifts that God has given to us and how we can say yes to our Lord by sharing those gifts with one another. Now, Andrew, Andrew easily could have not have done anything that he did, but imagine the people's lives that would not have been, that would not have been affected or that would not have experienced our Lord's effects. For example, those thousands would not have perhaps been fed if he would not have brought this boy forward. Again, Jesus probably could have done whatever he wanted to do, but it was because Andrew said yes and brought this boy forward, thousands were fed that day. Likewise, this Greek learned about our Lord because Andrew brought him to our Lord. The people in Greece, um, even as Andrew was being crucified in the form of an X, they too and their lives were changed because of him. Imagine the lives that you can change by you saying yes to our Lord. Now, I'm not just saying yes when Father asks you to serve or to read or to sing or to play an instrument or to bring up the gifts. Yes, those are all wonderful ways for us to say yes to that ministry, to that wonderful invitation of our Lord of being fishers of God's people. But what about when we leave the church here tonight? How can we impact the church with our yes? Whose lives is God calling us to serve and to bring closer to him? Only God knows. And so my prayer for all of you is that you can truly allow the Eucharist that we are about to receive to liven your hearts to want to say yes, to put everybody else out that, you know, regardless of what you think people are thinking of you or saying about you, that, you know what, it doesn't matter. Andrew did not care. He was willing to die for Christ and to suffer for two whole days proclaiming him. Let us pray that with the help of St. Andrew, we too can say yes to our Lord, that we too can be fishers of God's people, that we too can build his church and the people of God. Who, who knows whose lives we can touch, but I guarantee by saying yes to him, I guarantee he, God, our, our Lord, our God, has at least touched one of us. And so let us stand as we turn now to our God. We do so in confidence and prayer as we do so now with our petitions. That Francis, our Pope, and Chad, our Bishop, may give leadership by preaching the word and showing pastoral love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the footsteps of those who spread the message of Jesus may be a welcome sound and dispose people to discovering Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who honor St. Andrew as patron may find in his faith and courage a sure guide. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that there may be an increase to vocations, especially in our diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our forebears may rest in the peace of Christ, especially Otto and Marge Karski, for whom this mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, we ask you to hear the prayers we have spoken, the silent ones we hold in our hearts, like Andrew, who responded to your invitation, we ask that by your grace and your spirit that we too might do the same. Open our hearts up always to your will and your love for us as we place our prayers and our lives before you this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you please be seated now as we bring forward the gifts and hopefully have two brave souls to bring up the gifts and saying yes to our Lord. We will sing number 42, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, in your these books. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. Come our 
fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in Thee. Israel, strength and consolation, hope of all the earth Thou art. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings, which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Chad, our Bishop and all the clergy, 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. For the communion right, you probably know this already, but as you can see, the left side is a little less of uh, number-wise compared to the right side. So for those of you who are in the back side there, um, if you want to come and fill in on the left-hand side as you come up and just return down the side aisle and then return to your pews then in the back so that we can have the lines even uh, throughout the communion right. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We will sing uh, 353, one, one Love Released.
Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so by the example of the blessed Apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, first of all, I just want to take this time to thank those who did volunteer and help with the various ministries, um, especially last minute. Um, thanks to all of you for your participation as well. And I um, know that Father Cornelius and I are keeping you in prayer this evening, as you, uh, as well as those who are also on staff and helping out and volunteering. Uh, they may have a good retreat tonight. And then just allow the Spirit to, uh, to move you in the direction that God is calling you to, and also in help building his church as fishers of God's people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing, and after each of these prayers, please respond, amen. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle Andrew. Amen. And may he, who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles, make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. On the back side of your missalette, we like to do it. Our tradition here at uh, St. Anne's and St. Catherine's is the St. Michael prayer. So grab your missalettes. Um, on the back side, there's prayers. On the bottom left-hand corner, we'll pray, pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We'll sing 41 on Jordan's Bank.
most sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Thank you. 